Hey guys, this is Nate with Zebros, and today we're going to talk a little bit about our snowmobile rear track shocks, the different options, and some of the basics of how to tune and adjust your center and rear track shock on your snowmobile. So, as with our ski shocks, the exit rear shocks come in a couple of different configurations. Uh, we have what we call our XO, which is a non-adjustable piggyback. And then we have our X1, which is going to be a compression adjustable piggyback. And then our X2 in certain applications, especially rear track shocks, um, we have our compression and rebound adjustment. So let's talk about uh, probably the most important thing when it comes to setting up your center or rear track shock. We'll focus on the center track shock first. That is your preload. And we utilize a threaded, um, body, so it's very similar to what most of the factories have. Um, but you're going to utilize the first thing you're going to need to do is loosen this little pinch bolt. So after the shock is installed on the sled, and in the center sh track shock application, it's critical that you install it, and you also uh, take the weight of the of the rear suspension so it's off the ground, and then have your limiter strap hooked up to whatever length you want, and then at that point. Uh, using a 5 30 seconds Allen, you can, you can loosen this little pinch bolt or Allen bolt. And what that's gonna do is allow you to turn this preload adjuster um, clockwise or counterclockwise. And preload is the most important setting on your shocks in the beginning. You have to dial in how much preload you have so that you can set the bottoming resistance that you want for your type of riding, rider weight, you know, any of the accessories that you have on your sled, whether you're skiing and carrying two riders and things like that, and you kind of want to have a happy medium so you have two people on there, you might need a little bit more preload. But we do not set the preload on center and rear track shocks. They just have simply two turns of preload so that the spring has some tension on it, but we don't set that. That's something that you'll have to do on your own, but it's pretty simple to do. So once you have your center track shock installed, like the instructions show, um, loosen that pinch bolt and orient it so that you can get to it when it's in the sled. And then at that point, what we recommend is you can leave it where we have it at and get out on the trail and find a bumpy section. You know, whatever, wherever you ride most commonly, find a good rough bump section and run through that a few times and try to pay attention whether you feel it bottoming in your feet, you know, your toes, or whether you feel like it's the back of the sled bottoming. If you feel it in your feet when you're standing in the stirrup, um, it's more than likely your center track shock that's bottoming. If you feel the back of the sled going all the way to the ground and it's uh, you know, more in your butt and behind you than it's your rear track shock. So go out there and pound the bumps. And what we recommend is just simply adding two turns, two to three turns per adjustment. So if you feel like the center track shock's hitting the bottom and it's a little bit soft, uh, add two to three turns of preload and then snug back up your, your set screw so that you don't lose it because it will rattle out with vibration pretty easily. And you just need to snug it up and then go hit that same trail section. And when you get the center track shock, you know, feeling good to where it's not bottoming, you know, focus on the rear next and it's the same type of adjustment. You're going to loosen that pinch bolt with the 530 seconds and then add the preload as needed. So one thing on the rear that you'll find is, is sometimes you're running a little bit more preload and this kind of gets hard to turn when you're out on the trail. And again, all this can be done when you're on the trail, you just run down, pull off to the side, out of the way so nobody will hit you, <clears throat> roll the sled on the side, reach under there, loosen that pinch bolt, and then you can just grab it with your hand and twist the preload in firmer for more bottoming resistance or softer for less. But the other thing to remember is there's these little holes in our preload nuts. And if you take a quarter inch punch with you, it will fit in these holes. Or I actually like to buy little cheap uh, screwdrivers, you know, or the free ones you get from Harbor Freight. I'll cut the end off. So then you have a little uh, stud and a handle and I can just put that right in those holes so that when you get a little bit more preload and it starts to become hard to turn by hand, you know, once you get past about a half an inch or or something like that, it might get a little bit hard and sometimes you have ice and stuff build up in there. So having something like that is very helpful uh, for adjusting preload. So now once you have your preload set, that's where if you have um, an X1 or an X2 rear track shock, 
that's where your compression adjuster is going to come in. So um, <clears throat> again, the compression knob is a broad range. There's click detents. You can count the clicks and, and kind of figure out where you're at. More than likely, when you get them from us, they're gonna be in the middle, but always check that, familiarize yourself with it, turn it all the way closed until it stops, and then just count your clicks back out and put it in the center of the adjustment range when you're going out to, to mess around. Once you get your preload set and you feel good about your bottoming resistance and you're in the middle of the adjustment range, where I like to use the compression adjuster quite a bit is when I'm going in uh, to the back country, whether you have one mile, five miles, or 15 miles of trail, you're gonna experience bumps. Sometimes the trails aren't groomed. Um, our, the local canyon I ride a lot um, doesn't get groomed hardly at all. So it's pretty much just solid whoops and, and big square edged holes. So I like to run my compression adjuster open so that I utilize the softest amount of dampening so that I'm able to utilize as much of the suspension as possible. Um, even if I bottom, you know, uh, five or 10% of the time as I'm touring in, that's okay because when I move my adjuster back to the middle or as I close it off um, and utilize this compression adjuster, especially in the rear track shock application, uh, when you get off trail, if you have a turbo, a big bore, or something like that, and you have your limiter strap kind of out and the sled tends to want to wheelie, if you close that compression adjuster all the way hard or all the way clockwise till it stops, it's going to help mitigate ski lift because you're slowing down the dampening, you know, 15 to 20%. Again, we're only able to adjust what the shaft displaces and flows into our reservoir. So you're, you're never gonna get more than what that shaft is displacing. So it's, it's about 15 uh, or 20%, depending on the bore diameter. Most of our snowmobile rear track shocks are inch and a half on the bore. So it's bigger than uh, most actually so and then we utilize a 5 8 uh, shaft so when that sh that shaft is is shoved into the body there's a column of oil that it displaces that has to flow into the reservoir um, so and that's what we're able to adjust with the adjuster so utilize that compression adjuster on the trail open it up make it nice and soft and plush when you're touring in and then when you get off trail um, and maybe you are going to climb something and you want to have a little bit more ski lift control close it all the way if you're playing around and you're, you're messing around with bow ties and you know, uh, just getting the skis up, you know, open it up a little bit more, but pay attention to that because it will affect your, you know, how quickly it bottoms and things like that. So if you're jumping and dropping off stuff, you're probably gonna wanna close your adjuster um, to the halfway point or even closer to the close point. So they're easy to adjust because you don't have to have any tools. It's just a simple knob. Uh, they're, pretty easy to access in almost all applications. The one that is sometimes a little bit harder to get to is the rebound adjuster knob. So a lot of rear shock applications, guys will buy the X2 shock, which has the rebound adjuster because you can utilize that for um, jumps and pop and also just for overall ride quality. If you want the shock to be really active going in on the trail, you would open your rebound adjuster, you know, four five or six clicks to get that rear suspension really moving and picking up all the small chatter. You know, if you're jumping and the lip maybe, you know, is kicking you a little bit, you might want to slow the rebound down so that the sled doesn't, you know, come forward on you. You don't have to utilize so much of the gas to fix yourself in the air. So the rebound adjuster is very helpful. One thing to keep in mind with the rebound adjuster is that as you adjust the rebound, it actually does affect compression dampening because it's a simple bleed cross hole that's built into the shaft. And as you adjust this, you're, you're moving a, a rod that's actually in the center of the shaft that just move, that closes that uh, bypass hole or opens it up. So when you adjust rebound, just be aware that as you make it stiffer on the rebound, you're also gonna add a little bit of compression. As you make it softer on rebound, you're going to take away a little bit of compression. So you may just wanna pay attention to to maybe offsetting with your compression adjuster, whatever you're doing in the opposite direction. So rebound is very helpful in the rear track shock application. Um, so check out our X2 shock. Um, a couple other things to keep in mind with our shocks. Uh, we talked about it in our ski shock series was some of the things that you just don't see that you might not understand or know when you take a look at an exit shock. Um, every single component is built and when it comes to the body, the bridge, the insert, the eyelets, the hardware, the reservoir, 
everything is built out of billet. We don't have any cast parts, so everything is extremely high quality. We're able to hold a very tight tolerance, which helps with our stiction and restriction of the shock because we're able to hold such a high tolerance. Our bodies are aluminum and they are hard anodized inside and out, which helps to give us a nice hard surface for um, our wear bands to glide on so that we have low stiction, but they also just last uh, you know, an extremely long time. So we also utilize a 7075 hard anodized piston, which is a high flow piston because we don't want our piston to be a restriction point. We want the oil to be able to go through the, the piston and we want to regulate and tune our shock with our valving stack. We utilize a progressive or uh, velocity sensitive valving. So the harder that you slam that shock into the ground and the higher shaft speeds, it's going to fight back and resist bottoming with our progressive uh, dampening that we have. We utilize a dual stage and, and some pro just natural progressive um, linear stacks. So it depends on the application, the position on the snowmobile, whether it's a center track shock or rear track shock and also the geometry of the suspension. So high flow piston, it's really cool. This is kind of the, the heart and soul of a shock, kind of like when you're working on a mod motor, that porting that helps to, to help that air to flow through the engine, make more horsepower. We, we have an extremely uh, cool piston, I think, when comparing it to what's out there. Um, and then next would be our seal head assembly. We utilize a brass ice scraper. And the reason for the brass ice scraper is when you're snowmobiling, you're constantly in water and ice and cold temperatures. And ice can form on the shaft, especially when you leave it out overnight at your cabin or something like that. Or just when you're riding and you break for lunch for an hour and the shock has a little bit of heat in it. And then you, um, come back from lunch and you hit the trail, there's ice on there. We have a brass ice scraper and the idea behind the brass is it's able to cut that ice off and keep it from going into the seal head rather than just a rubber one or a plastic one that's not gonna be as burly. But then it's backed up by a Teflon O-ring and the Teflon will actually coat the shaft so that that ice and snow can't stick to it. It fills all those little micro holes. We utilize a micro polished chrome shaft because it's the most durable to salt and different things like that, but it also has a very low stiction coefficient. So that seal head is able to glide on the shaft and we don't have any restrictions. So it picks up those small bumps really well. But that Teflon O-ring is really cool that we utilize because it helps give you one more um, line of defense against ice and water. Um, and then of course, our bridges, uh, you know, we utilize kind of a cool design, design on our bridges where it has an insert that's clockable, so we're able to orient this reservoir 360 degrees around, depending on the application, you know, like this one's clocked at a 90, you know, this one has probably like a 30 or, or 40 degree clocking. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing that we have. And then again, just our, our spring rates are adjustable and then they're set to the rider weight and the different applications. Um, whether you're running a long track or a short track, or you're a really aggressive rider or a lighter weight rider. So again, if you have questions, always feel free to reach out at zebrosracing.com, hit up one of our customer service uh, or our sales reps, or just uh, hit up your local dealer. We have a lot of dealers around the West and, and all over the country actually and in Canada. So if you have questions, just reach out. And again, you can find all of our products on zebrosracing.com.